Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Today we're checking out iOS 13 at beta 5. There are so many changes in this update. I actually don't know how Apple packed this much into a beta 5. Usually they're wrapping things up by now. Not that much is changing, but this year that's just not the case. You got the option to make bigger icons on the iPad. You've got new stuff on the iPhone as well. And I want to run you guys through all of the new changes and features right now. So if you're excited for that, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more, and let's go ahead and get started with iOS 13 beta 5. All right, so kicking things off here on the iPhone. This also applies in the iPad as well, but the volume indicator is not only slimmer in this update, as you can see, it was already super tiny and you can still interact with it with your finger, but it goes to the side super quickly now. There are more granular volume options. So you know before where if you're at zero, you'd press eight times to go halfway. That's only gonna get you a quarter of the way now because rather than the top of the bar being 16 presses, it is now 32 presses, which not only is cool because when you're all the way at the top, it'll vibrate letting you know you're all the way at the top. Same thing is true if you're down to the bottom. If you go all the way down to the bottom, get some really nice feeling haptic feedback. I wish I could like play it for you guys, but uh, vibration demos are pretty much impossible. But now you literally have to press it twice the amount to go up or down, which is good if you want more control of your volume, like the exact decibel level that it's playing, but will be a bit more annoying if you just want to get to halfway. I mean, you literally have to press the button twice as much. After updating to iOS 13 at beta 5, there is a new onboarding screen for light and dark mode. In case you didn't know that there's that new option in iOS 13, it is loud and clear and it actually dynamically changes depending on which option you select with a nice little fade animation. When you 3D touch on a song in iOS 13 at beta 5, there is a new menu that comes up now. Before these were like so much more squeezed together, it just feels like there's a breath of fresh air here. Like these options have room to breathe. This is a general share sheet update, which I really appreciate. Before, these were all together and there were no separators for like specific to the music app or share this anywhere else. Uh, Make a PDF, for example, really has no application here, but now they're more separate and it feels good. Like I can actually see the options in front of me. And also on the iPad, as you guys can see right here, it's a little bit different too. You have these sections, also edit actions down there. It makes so much more sense and again, removes the stress or like confusion of trying to find exactly exactly what you were looking for. Also for the new share sheet, you may have been wondering why copy appeared first. I wasn't able to get this working in every case where the new share sheet appeared, but where it did work, you guys could actually set favorite actions. So if frequently, like I always do, I wanna add it to a playlist or delete it or add it to my library, you can add that up top here. And now every time you go into the share sheet, those actions come up first and not just first, but in the order you want. So if you always do something like downloading, playing next, playing later, queuing, loving, suggesting more, you can put those actions up top, which is actually sick. Also inside of the music app now, if you tap on a song that doesn't have lyrics, so for example, this one it does, and you'll see down here, it actually shows up that live lyric icon, uh, and it's such a good interface. I'm really happy with what Apple did there. If you go on a song that doesn't actually support this, like uh, one of these songs by Slow Dancer, really good artist, by the way, if you guys like some more alternative-ish uh, indie music, there are no live lyrics available, so, Obviously, you don't want to push the option and have nothing happen, so Apple has just graded out now. And also for live lyrics, you can still view them live, but let's say you don't want to. If you tap up here, you can view full lyrics and look at them traditionally. Let's say you don't want to do you know, a little carpool karaoke by yourself in the car because uh, you don't want to feel that lonely. I'm just joking with you guys. If you do that, that's totally cool. <laughs> but you can, you can view them in full now if you're looking for a specific lyric. Now, this is a really small change, but apparently the check mark in a lot of places around iOS has been redesigned. It looks a bit slimmer to me, but also, I don't know if anybody, do you guys care about a check mark? Let me know down below because it's real tiny. Uh, I don't think it has any significant impact, but it appears that it has been ever so slightly tweaked as well, which is a common theme for Apple when iOS 13 slowly, but surely so many different parts of the operating system are changing. I also believe this is a little bit different. These icons appear to be a bit smaller when you're playing music through Control Center, and then they expand to be about normal size when you do that. But when minimized, yeah, they are definitely smaller than before. One of the biggest rumors we heard for iOS 13 before it ever came out was a redesigned home screen. And you could argue that that's what we got. Really, the icons just got smaller. You could actually fit more iPad icons on the screen uh, because the size literally decreased by a significant amount. And then we got these tabs or like widgets over here. Well, now, if you're not a huge fan of that and you just want bigger icons, under display and brightness on the iPad, you can scroll down and you'll see right here, bigger option. Uh, this is pretty cool. They are gigantic. But if you're somebody who literally does not care about those widgets at all and you just want the icons to be pretty much where they were before. Well, you've got this now. So the icons can be back to a more traditional size uh, for people that don't care about widgets or just want bigger icons on the iPad. 
iPad. Now, if you do like the redesigned home screen on the iPad in iOS 13, then that's cool too because you can now finally pin more than two favorites. I noticed all the time you could pin two, like I did batteries and news because I like those, but none of these other ones would actually like work all that well at all. Like you actually could not pin more than two, which didn't make sense if you wanted to see more than two. Now that is working as expected, and if I tinker with it real quick, I believe you can do up to five pin favorites now. Oh, actually six? Seven, maybe there's no limit, and then these will just show up in whatever order you'd like, always at the very top of your feed. We were talking about the new volume indicator earlier, and I actually wanted to get a screenshot to show you guys, um, and tweet it out in this, which I shared earlier right here, but it actually didn't let me because a new feature in iOS 13 beta 5 is the fact that it disappears when you take a screenshot. Uh, which makes sense for everyone else but YouTubers, but uh, you know, bloggers, people that want to actually show people this content, especially when it's like out here. I mean, the second you press those two buttons, it disappears and then takes a screenshot. So like, listen, Apple, I get it, but also, you know, I need this job security. And speaking of screenshots, in some places on iOS 13, uh, look at this, the corners of them are actually rounded, which makes sense if you have an iPhone XS or a 10 or a 10R or, you know, one of the 11s coming out in September. But for everybody else that has just normal phones, I mean, the screenshots just have these black corners now, which I don't think look look good at all. Uh, it looks actually quite weird. It'd be cool if they cut the corners on iPhone 10 style devices, but then just did square for everybody else or when you share on social media. You may have seen that when I tapped on the app store right here, there's some new text that says upcoming automatic updates. Um, some people said that they weren't allowed to update their apps after seeing that text, but I actually haven't had any issues. It just looks like Apple says that if you have automatic updates installed, like it's letting you know, hey, you can update these now uh, when it's working properly, or you should probably wait just a little bit because I mean, it's gonna be on your phone automatically. Inside of settings, you've also probably noticed that the change last week was a bug or a mistake. Before, there was no way you could see general even on the first page anymore because Apple had made these a lot thicker. I assumed it was a bug and it turns out that it was. Like the icons were a little bit more offset. I'm also hoping we get a refresh of these icons. They've been largely the same since iOS 7 and you know, we've seen it in a beta update before. So maybe those icon updates are on the way. For this week's update on the epic 3D touch saga, I don't know what Apple's done, but they have finally put it back to where I would say it feels just as good as iOS 11. When you're 3D touching on the home screen before, you'd have to long press. And even when you would 3D touch, it would take a long time. Like as you guys can see now, um, I'm going pretty quick. I'm going pretty speedy and it actually feels like 3D touch is made to feel what I paid for that feature uh, when I bought my phone. It's not nerfed to nearly the level it was before and I think Apple's finally nailed it again. Setting wallpapers is a lot better. As you guys can see, like the changes just keep coming. Not only uh, are these rounded now, I don't remember that. Let me know if I'm wrong down below in the comments, but I'm pretty sure this part looks a little bit different. But when you go to set a new wallpaper, you guys know how there'd be that delay always? Well, now watch what happens. You go here, you go here, you hit set both, no delay. Oh, that's actually funny. So there is a slight delay, but it just doesn't tell you that there's a slight delay. So it will take an extra second, but rather than iOS sort of stonewalling you and said, nah fam, you can't go past here right now uh, and put a little loading indicator, well, you just get the loading indicator in the background. Here's what it looks like when you open the health app for the first time in iOS 13 beta 5. We do have an updated splash screen right here. It says we got summary now, highlights, get a better understanding of your data and how it's changing. That's actually pretty sweet. I like that a lot. And you do get cycle tracking now for your menstrual cycle. If you go over to the health app, I think I have it hidden somewhere in here, but it's actually really cool. So like it told me today, hey, you're a little bit behind where you should be. Uh, usually you have more steps by now. And I'm like, damn, I, uh, you know, it doesn't make me feel great about my health. I am going to the gym later, so you guys don't have to worry about me, but uh, this is actually kind of cool. I like the highlights a lot in iOS 13. Now, at first, this one was pretty concerning. Instead of the shortcuts app, the automation tab has been removed entirely. So everyone was like, yo, like the tent pole feature for iOS 13 for the shortcuts app is, is that literally just gone now? Turns out it actually isn't. It is simply removed for the time being and it will definitely be returning in iOS 13. I, I'm assuming by the public release, likely in sometime middle to late September, but yes, this was confirmed. On the iPad in iOS 13, you have the option to open multiple versions or multiple windows of the same app, which is pretty sweet. And that interface looks just like this. In iOS 13 beta 5, cool new option. When you kill one of these windows, there's a new button up here that says reopen closed window. So if you were like, oh shoot, I had something really important in that workspace or you want to add a new one, I believe the, yeah, the plus has been there forever, but reopen closed window, that's a new option. So you're like, oh, cool. You know, I can just go back to browsing my favorite website. This is also an iPad exclusive feature in iOS 13 beta five, but let's see, you've got a ton of stuff going on as I do here. It looks like kind of a mess. You can tap and hold on this window icon 
and now merge all windows and watch what happens when I do that. Whoa, look at that, they're all in the same place. And that's everything opened in Safari on my iPad. It's now in the same place, all in these tab views, which is cool because I was so spread out and now it is unified. So obviously we all know about dark mode by now, fastest way before I was 13 beta five was just to go here and actually enable it inside of control center. But now the accessibility shortcut, if you head over to accessibility, scroll down actually to guided access, even though it's listed down there, guided access, you have to turn guided access on and then turn on the accessibility shortcut. Then when you go down to accessibility shortcut, you guys can see right here, there's an option for dark appearance. So watch this, rather than having to do anything else, I'm gonna leave this on my iPhone forever. Triple tap of the button and look, you go from dark to light mode. Same thing happens inside of settings or any of your other apps. Triple tap, light to dark mode. Definitely the easiest and quickest way to enable dark mode and you guys heard it here first. This one is again a very tiny change, but the LTE or 4G or 3G, whatever icon is displayed up here, that is a bit larger than it was before. No idea why Apple blew it up, but they did, I guess, so you can tell which one is which easier. Now in the settings app, while we don't have new wallpapers there, we do get some new wallpapers inside of the home app. So as you guys can see right here, we do have four or five, yeah, oh, six actually, new wallpaper options I had forgotten right here. So you've got this red one. I mean, actually zoom out and show you guys how each of these looks. Takes just a second to actually take effect, but that is red right there. This one is sort of like the more traditional home app coloring just because it has been yellow for a while. Blue's right here and it looks pretty good. I wish Apple would actually let us set these as stock wallpapers though, just because, you know, we can't and they are locked down to strictly the home app. Purple, probably one of my least favorites, but still sort of gets the job done. Phone's about to go camo with this one. Whoa, guys, my phone disappeared. It's in front of the green little tree right here that I shoot in front of. Uh, <laughs> a little green one right there. And then finally, the very last wallpaper, if you guys are so inclined to try this one out, uh, probably one of the more professional looking of the bunch. Very last one is sort of like a, a spinoff of this green one, but looks just like this. So a little bit darker, almost the same thing as before, but a bit more serious. While using Safari in iOS 13 beta four or earlier in the beta cycle, for some reason, the open and new tab option disappeared temporarily. So there was no way to actually like I don't know, open it in a new tab. It was real random. I don't even know how these things crop up in the first place, but as you can see, when you do that now, it actually opens it in a separate tab. In CarPlay, there have been a couple of updates. Ironically, while HomeKit automation was taken out of the Shortcuts app in iOS 13, it's actually back in the iOS 13 version of CarPlay now. Uh, so no idea why the team did that. You also get a new option to show album art and then apparently when you do actually choose that option, you get some like smaller fonts uh, and more room for other text on the screen. So that is now an option in CarPlay. For performance, here's what I got. 48.12 for the single core score, 11,286 for the multi-core score, which is actually pretty weak, uh, which is very surprising. Although the performance feels like the best in iOS 13 to date, I mean, everything loads instantaneously. I don't I don't know why it seems so slow. I actually had a higher multi-core score by like 300 almost on uh, on iOS 13 beta 2. So in the background, Apple's probably still trying to work stuff out, but you know, it's still a work in progress. So Apple, keep it up. Keep it the good work. You guys keep watching these videos. I always appreciate that. Hit like if you enjoyed it or learned something new. Hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam. Hope all of you are doing great. I'll catch up with you guys in the next iOS 13 beta update.